Alaska's Seward Peninsula is known for its remoteness, rich history, and vast beauty. The creatures that roam the peninsula's 20,000 square miles must be well adapted to the region's frigid Arctic winters and meager food supply. Muskox, called Umingmok, or bearded ones, in Inupiaq, are one of Bering Landbridge National Preserve's most unique beasts. In the United States, these animals live only in the northern and western parts of Alaska. About 3,000 muskox live on the peninsula today, after becoming locally extinct in the early 1900s due partly to overhunting and adverse climatic conditions. They graze on tussocks, sedges, wildflowers, and other tundra plants. Muskox have become a part of the subsistence lifestyle that exists on the peninsula, with many residents living primarily off of what the land provides. Seeing a herd of these woolly creatures gives a brief glimpse into prehistoric Ice Age times and reminds us of the delicate balance existing when humans and animals share the same space. They have very dense, dark brown hair that in the older animals can hang almost all the way to the ground. So all you see is one big lump of dark hair which looks like a wandering haystack maybe. They have an underwool called kiviet which is very soft and extremely warm and during the springtime and early summer you can see it come out in large sheets and that's when they look like unmade beds and all that wool hanging off of them. Recently, muskox have been seen closer to Alaskan communities, like Nome, a city of 3,500 on the coast of the Bering Sea. Initially, um, musk oxen came closer to town maybe because they felt safer here. One thing is that humans have been hunting them outside of town but not close to town. So there was hunting pressure on them further away from town but not close to town. There's all kinds of opinions. It's just so, it's very polarized. There's the people who absolutely love them and they say never ever touch one, you know, we want to see them, they're lovely. Other people want to shoot them all. But now we have this issue with them attacking dogs, so the, the opinion I think has gone south again. I'm personally, I like musk oxen and I like to see them, but I don't want to see them in the parking lot when I get out of the car. It's not the, a, a safe place for them. It's not safe for us to have them there. Although the close proximity of herds to town has caused somewhat of a local rift in opinion about these animals, subsistence hunters still highly value the muskox for their meat and hides. I've been muskox hunting ever since the opportunity came up over 15 years ago. The way I, I do it is for the meat and also for the hide for kivyut. Like any other animal, it creates uh, stews, steaks, uh, roasts. It's, it's not a nuisance thing. I, when I hunt them, you know, I'm very serious. Learn, every hunt's different. Every hunt's different. And not every hunt you have success either. You just, you know, get out and do, do the best you can. It's a great lifestyle. Not only are muskox an important food source for Alaskans, they can also be harvested for their thick undercoats called kiviut. This material can be spun into yarn and made into clothing eight times warmer than items made of sheep's wool. My name is Kirsten Bay and I have lived in Nome for 20 years. I like knitting um, and it's a really fine fiber. It's a very delicate, soft, lightweight fiber. I like making things. It's, uh, it's fun to, to do things from sort of start to finish. Kind of the neck warmers, head scarves, um, headbands um, are, you know, really good. The people, animals, and plants that live in and around Bering Landbridge National Preserve on the Seward Peninsula embrace a unique lifestyle in one of the world's wildest places. Whether local opinions are positive or negative about the muskox, these iconic creatures will continue to serve as a reminder of the connection we have to the land, all of its inhabitants, and our history. Music